to another episode of So You Think You Can Garden, the show where we don't have green thumbs, but we do have green hair. I'm your host, Emma the Librarian with the Sonoma County Library System, and I am not a gardener. Last time, I had built a gate in the middle of nowhere to start fortifying the garden. I had a somewhat unusual idea of what to do for fencing, but that idea was still percolating, so I didn't want to rush into anything. The most important thing, though, was that it was finally time to harvest. There were beans. There was lettuce. There was cucumbers. It was a whole salad showing up. After taking them and washing and prepping them, I ate them pretty gleefully. I mean, I wasn't woman with a salad happy, but I was pretty close. Until about an hour later. It started as just a little itch on my inner arm. First one side, then the other. I tried ignoring it, but pretty soon I was covered in itchy red bumps all the way up to my elbows. Well, of course I had to Google what was going on. Apparently garden rash is a very common type of dermatitis. It comes from interacting with plants that have spiny, spiky, or hairy elements along their stems, such as zucchini, green beans, even some types of cucumber. It what lets them hang onto trellises and perhaps acts as bug defense. Garden rash is apparently very common. It's uh, irritating, but not harmful. And it means I had planted an entire garden full of things I was allergic to. Of course, of course I would plant a garden full of things I couldn't touch. And I told all my friends and they mostly just laughed at me. You mock my pain! Life is pain, Highness. Anyone who says differently is selling something. I solved this problem by buying very long gloves and also try not to touch things too much when harvesting. Don't touch anything but the bean. No! Oh, that's a disaster. Try to take just the bean. But don't touch the plant if you're allergic slightly more successful. Yeah, that mostly worked. Something interesting happened about this time though. Our neighbor was remodeling and had pulled out all of the bricks from their old fireplace. He saw me coming home one day and said, hey, I've got all these old bricks that we're not going to use. Do you think you could use them in your garden? Otherwise, they're just gonna go in the trash. Well, everyone certainly had my number. There was no way I was going to say no to free trash. But what was I going to do with the bricks? I, I didn't think I had enough to, like, outline beds or build a fence or anything like that. I mean, maybe there was enough for a path? There was. Unlike trying to build a garden gate by committee, I decided to stick to my own path for building a path with one exception. My dad pointed out that I still had some cement mix left and that if I mixed it with sand, that would be a good way to keep weeds from growing in between the bricks, but also still be removable. Sturdy, but removable because I'm a renter. So that's what I did. This point in the process made me think of a book I read a few years ago called The Cement Garden by Ian McEwan. It doesn't have anything to do with gardening. I put together a book list called Books with Garden in the title, but don't have anything to do with gardening. At least I think so. I don't know. I haven't read them all. Most of them appear to be books about murder instead. I don't know. I haven't really read them. I mean, you can find the book list in the description, and if you read them, let me know. Is there any actual gardening? The Cement Garden is really, really not about gardening. Okay, I had a gate, I had a path, it was definitely time for a fence. And I had a really 
great idea. The Grinch got a wonderful, awful idea. Tune in next time to find out about my fence building notion and a little incident I like to call Flower Gate. Like and subscribe for more content from this channel and we'll see you all next time. Bye. Tweet, tweet, tweet you. Go find another tree. Car alarms, birds tweeting, somebody hammering. This is why I need to close the set. Woman holding giant knitting needles gleefully. <laughs>